When you hear people talk online about two fighters in a dogfight, you hear a lot of terms thrown around. You might hear the term ACM for air combat maneuvering used to describe a one-on-one -on -one fight. But in the U.S. Air Force, ACM means a fight where it's more than just a one-on-one -on -one duel. So how do we keep things straight with all these terms floating around? In this video, we'll go over how the Air Force teaches this topic right out of the manual they use. The USAF has a very specific definition for basic fighter maneuvers. It is the efficient application of aircraft handling skills to either attain a position from which weapons may be employed, deny the adversary a position from which weapons may be launched, or defeat weapons employed by the adversary. The key words here are aircraft handling skills. That's what BFM is all about, and it's why a pilot would use the skills learned in BFM in other areas too. In BFM, there are no canned maneuvers. Instead, pilots use the aircraft handling skills taught in BFM to create or solve BFM problems. When we say BFM problem, what we're talking about are problems involving range, angles, or closure with our adversary in the other aircraft, which we'll call the bandit from now on. When you're on the tail of the bandit trying to line up a shot, he creates these problems for you, which you will have to solve using BFM aircraft handling skills. And if you're defending against the bandit's attacks, then you will be creating problems for him. Range and closure rate should be self-explanatory, but when we're talking about angles, there are a few specifics we need to know. Knowing and understanding where you are off the tail of the bandit is critical, and we have a name for that angle. Aspect angle, or AA for short. It goes from zero when you're directly off the tail to 180 when you're 180 degrees from the tail. This is also why head-on fights are referred to as high aspect. Lower AA is needed for a good gunshot or when employing a missile that only works on the rear quarter. The heading difference between two aircraft is known as the heading crossing angle or HCA. It's sometimes referred to as angle off. There are two angles that are specific to your own aircraft antenna train angle, and angle off tail. Antenna train angle is commonly referred to as angle off nose, and it's the angle that a fighter's radar antenna would have to turn away from the aircraft's heading to face the bandit. Angle off tail is the same, only it's measured from the tail. With the bandit on the fighter's tail, like in this picture, the AOT and the AA shown to the bandit would be the same. So in a defensive situation, the terms can be used interchangeably. BFM isn't just about angles. It's also about knowing when and how to turn. So let's go over some turn fundamentals. Turns are used to solve range, angle, and closure problems when on the offensive, or to present those problems defensively. We have a few terms that we use to describe our turns. Turn circle, turn radius, turn rate, and turning room. The turn circle, or TC for short, is an imaginary circle in the sky that follows the flight path of an aircraft in a turn. Its exact shape is based on airspeed and G. If you increase the speed of a turning aircraft while maintaining G, then that turn circle is going to get bigger. Increasing G or lowering speed will make it smaller. In a dogfight, the offensive fighter needs to align turn circles with the bandit before getting a good shooting solution. When you break down BFM to its core elements, it's really about visualizing these turn circles in the sky and then exploiting what you see. Turn rate and radius are just properties of the turn circle. The turn rate is degrees per second of heading change on a given TC. As you can imagine, having a higher turn rate makes it quicker to generate or solve BFM problems. The turn radius is just one half the size of a TC. Having a smaller turn radius as the offensive aircraft lets you turn inside a bandit's TC to get a weapon solution while maintaining an offensive advantage. As a defender, you can use a smaller turn radius to force the bandit to fly outside your TC and deny him a shot. Turning room is any displacement from the bandit's flight path in any plane. Another way to think of this is if you're trying to turn onto a bandit's tail when you're passing by really close you don't really have the room needed to get onto a 6 o'clock. But if you moved out before the pass, you can now easily convert onto his tail. That's called building turning room, 
And an important thing to remember is that turning room for the attacker is also turning room for the defender. Now that we've learned some things about angles and turns, we can talk about another fundamental concept in BFM, the control zone. As we maneuver through a dogfight, we need a way to tell when we're in position to assess the situation and decide if we can move in for a kill. That place is known as the control zone, and it's defined as having 2,500 to 4,500 feet of slant range and within a 25 to 45 degree aspect angle cone. When you're within the control zone, it means you're close to the bandit's turn circle. It also gives you the opportunity to decide if you're close enough to move up for a shot or if you need to refine your position. This is what a pilot in a T-38 would expect to see when in the bandit's control zone. Here, just above the canopy bow, is where you would see the bandit if you're at the forward edge of the control zone. Farther back, you would see the bandit higher up above the canopy bow and showing a higher aspect angle. As we're assessing the bandit, we're going to see him moving across the canopy. This movement's direction and rate is known as the line of sight rate, or LOSR for short. When it's moving slowly towards the front of your jet, it has a low forward LOS rate. And if it moves towards the tail quickly, then we would say it has a high aft LOS rate. That change in LOS can tell you a lot about what's going on. When you have a better turn rate than the bandit and are making progress up his turn circle, then the LOS will move forward or it might move backward if the bandit is doing better. When you cross the bandit's turn circle, you'll see a shift in LOS rate. Keeping track of the bandit's LOS is crucial during a fight. Later in this series, we'll go over how you can use LOS rate to understand how the fight is progressing. Now there's one final thing we need to cover. The lift vector versus plane of motion. When we talk about lift vector, we're talking about an imaginary line perpendicular to the wings out the top of the canopy to infinity. This is the direction in which our wings are providing lift. It's important to understand that in a turning dogfight, the lift vector is not necessarily the same direction that an aircraft is moving. That direction is known as the plane of motion, or POM for short. POM is based on a number of factors, including lift vector placement, amount of yaw, angle of attack, G, and airspeed. In fact, as you pull more G, the lift vector and POM tend to get closer together, but there's usually a difference between the two. And it's important to spot the difference since you'll need to maneuver on the bandit's plane of motion and not necessarily on his lift vector. In this video, we covered a lot of terminology used in BFM training. We covered angles, the most important of which is aspect angle, or AA. This is how many degrees an aircraft is off another aircraft's tail. We also went over terms for turns, like turn circle, turn rate, and turn radius. And also how the separation between two aircraft provides turning room. As a bandit moves along the canopy, we describe that motion with a line of sight rate. And this motion tells us a lot about how a fight is progressing. There's also an area behind the bandit known as the control zone, which is where we want to be to assess if we're ready for a shot. Lastly, we went over the difference between a lift factor and a plane of motion. That covers the terms we'll be using in this series on BFM, and they're all right out of the Air Force's official manual. Now you might be wondering why we didn't cover some terms related to BFM like rolling scissors or one and two circle fights. Those will be covered in a future video because we need to understand the fundamentals first. It's important to know the parts of a turn and a circle before moving on to something like two circle fights. In the next part of this series, we'll go over how you can figure out a fighter's maximum performance by understanding its energy maneuverability diagram. I hope you found this information useful and thanks for watching.